Oh, okie dokie. Well, morning, everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast. And um, this time around, I'm kind of risking it here. Because uh, uh, I'm going to be playing... I'm gonna be playing some actual music, so there's gonna be a pretty good. There's gonna be a chance that YouTube might flag this video for copyright. Uh, leading my only option is to upload this to Twitch, and um, if uh, if it gets and if Twitch mutes it, then probably what I'll end up having to do is I'll be forced to do a grab some like uh some kind of ambient music or you know, like waterfalls and streams or something, and then um. It's gonna be a. It's probably gonna be a half ass, uh, a half ass cast. So, a second attempt, I should say. So, but anyway, the music is uh, "Secret Stairways," "Enchantment of the Ring," 1997. Um, I heard um, I heard uh, I heard uh, it's called dungeon synth music, but I heard something like this like a few days ago. Uh, but it, it's so buried in my history that I figured it's not even worth looking for. But it sounded cool as hell, though. Um, so, wanted to, wanted to play more of this stuff. I just, I think I just clicked, uh, Dungeon Synth, like, on my, my uh, on the, YouTube, on the YouTube page. And then this is one of the things that came up. Um, one, because it came out in 1997. A lot of the stuff that I was looking at, or that I heard yesterday, came out in, like, 2010 or something like that. So, we're talking, like, 90s here. But, um. But yeah, it's called Secret Steroids. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and I'll get started on that. Because I still kind of need to sound check this. And this time, I actually remember to... Hang on, let me, let me delete this. Let me delete this. And this time, I actually wrote some stuff down. And no, I don't... I don't write whole scripts or anything, but uh, I do, I do jot down some notes, uh, just some bullet points that I want to, I want to cover for, for my cast. So, but again, from time to time, I'll have to check the, uh, I'll have to check the volume, make sure it's not too loud or too quiet. But um, I watched uh, last night, um, probably shortly after my stream. I watched a video on um on on vegans, and um they're say they're basically saying veganism isn't all it's cracked up to be, which I kind of agree with. Um, because as far as I know, way back in the way back in the day, there was no such thing as vegan as vegans. Um, I I believe uh, the uh, ancestors, for lack of a better word. They all, uh, they all ate everything. They're omnivores. They ate whatever they could get their hands on. So it, the con the concept of going with strictly uh, vegetables and that's it, I don't what, probably wasn't pop, wasn't uh, possible back in the day. I mean, if, if there were, uh, if the only option you had was uh, animals to hunt, then that's what you went with. I mean, so I mean, so like I just said. Um, the ancestors were omnivores. You know, again, they had to eat whatever they could grab. They didn't have a whole lot of options. But, um... But, yeah, that's kind of what they were saying, too. And, um... I, oh, oh, let me... Yeah, we're getting a bit on the loud side here, so let me turn it down some. Anyway, um, but yeah, it, one of the, I only saw the video once, but, uh, they were also talking about, um, one of the reasons why people go vegan, it's because of animal cruelty, which, um, I'm, I've never, I've always thought that was a partial myth, because, I mean, if it's, um, if it's livestock, like cows, I mean, I wouldn't, I won't cause slaughtering them cruelty because their whole entire life is basically death. You know, they're born, they you know they eat a lot, they get fat, then they get slaughtered. That's it. 
I mean, you're not... To me, there's nothing... There's nothing cruel about that. I mean, it's all a... It's all a self-contained organization. You know, again, I mean, it's... It's the big, you know... It's big beef, I guess would be the term for it. But, you know... Big, you know, big beef. They raise the cattle. They... They give birth, you know, they give birth to them. They raise them. They slaughter them. I mean, it, this is... This is their life. It's, that's it. They're... Uh, you, I mean... You can't say... You can't... You can't say it's being cruel to something like this. I mean, now... Now, poaching... That's the word I, that's the word I was looking for yesterday. Um now poachers on the other hand, like if you are going into an animal's natural habitat, you know, grabbing them, kidnapping them, and then bringing them back to your slaughterhouse to get slaughtered, that's cruelty. So but, but oh and let me stop. Because once again I forgot to do this, but um I'm gonna crack open a can of V8 energy. Peach mango flavor. So, get ready for some pops. But yeah, just to kind of reiterate here, I don't livestock. I mean, um, cruelty to livestock animals to me isn't cruelty because being slaughtered is all these animals are being bred for. Now, but but if you're actually going into their habitat, you know, poaching them, you know, if you're doing that, then yes, that's cruelty. But but yeah, you gotta because a lot of times everybody equates animal cruelty with slaughtering the livestock, with killing the killing the cows and stuff like that. Which no, it, it no, I don't consider that to be cruelty. But but like like I said, it's when it comes to veganism, this is often the image that immediately gets conjured up. When they say it's cruel to animals, immediately cows come to mind. You know, you know, livestock comes to mind, but not, but almost never, po never poaching. You know, never poaching elephants or poaching tigers, etc. Like you know, stuff like that. That almost never gets brought up when it comes to veganism. It's always cows. You know, or or whatever, uh, whatever, whatever else is being. You know, oh, what's the word I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? That's be basically being bred for the slaughter. Those kind of animals. It's always, it's always these, these things here that get conjured up immediately, but never, animals are being poached, and I'm really starting to sound like a broken record here. So, let me try to move on. But, um, and, uh, even all the veganism in the world, I'm still, I'm kind of with Bill Maher on this. You know, you know what Mother Nature loves more than that? Condoms. You know, and I, I think I probably said this in one of my other casts too. You know, here's, I think probably one thing that really could have helped, um, help prevent the things that, things the way they are now with climate change and, you know, and, and wasteful technology, or at least I'd call it wasteful, would be birth control. You know, Maybe if uh, babies would stop being, you know, stop being born so, so rapidly. Okay, but I would have, I would also have to say too that, uh, um, hang on, let me, uh, let me check, uh, let me check something here real quick. Case. Let me turn this down a little tiny smidge. Okay. Yeah, it's starting to feel a little loud in my headphones, so. But I would also have to say too the medical care would also have to keep pace, you know, because I think one of the, one of the reasons why, um, I know this is true in ancient China, one of the reasons why they kept concubines back then was, uh, because, you know, medical care isn't what it is now, so basically if a child got a disease, or I should say, if a baby got a disease, they're basically dead in the water. They're done for. So, uh, so, in order to beat, so for disease, in order to beat it, you have to outbreed it. So, but again, I, the the general idea I'm getting at here is uh, some way to prevent overpopulation. Because I think um, if there was a way they could have figured it out, you know, it, 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 I mean, 
as pipe dreamish as this might sound, if there was a way to prevent, you know, prevent the birth from just from babies being born so rapidly, you know, maybe we wouldn't have been forced to, we wouldn't have been forced to invent agriculture. You know, um, you know, methods of, uh, you know, mass production. Because I'm also a believer in necessity is the mother of invention. You know, you know, factory, you know, factories that pollute the environment and all that. If, um, if we weren't, I mean, if we weren't breeding like rabbits, you know, factories wouldn't, wouldn't have needed to be invented. You know, and, there, you know, and the, uh, the pollution that went along with it. You know, there wouldn't have been a, there wouldn't have been a big fight between, between fossil fuels and, um, renewable energy. But again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of speculating and theorizing on this too. So it just, I, I can't, I, I, I had to, I had to see for this idea, um, in one of my earlier casts, you know, maybe if there was a way to prevent the population from exploding, you know, things like agriculture never would have, you know, never would have been invented. Uh, mass production never would have been invented. You know, all, a lot of all this, you know, could have been could have been prevented if, if there was a way to make birth control, you know, or if, if uh, there was a way to make birth control viable, viable back then. You know, I mean, you can you, you can't stop people from fucking. But, you know, you can at least stop them from uh, getting pregnant, though. But, you know, again, I'm with I'm with Bill Maher on this. All the veganism in the world isn't going to help if we're, you know, if people are just, if people are still just having babies, you know, they're just going to keep consuming the resources. You know, it's, and, um, before, uh, before my junk food addiction really kicked into high gear, um, I was a believer in the paleo diet because that's a diet there that's centered around what the ancestors ate. Again, they ate, they, they had to eat whatever was available. I don't think veganism existed back then because not everybody had access to, you know, berries and herbs and that kind of thing. You know, for some people, the only thing they had access to was buffalo. Um, Indians came to mind. Indians first come to mind. You know, Indians on the prairie. You know, they probably didn't have a whole lot of, uh, there probably weren't a whole lot of berries and fruit and whatnot that they could grab. All they had was buffalo. So, again, I don't think I doubt veganism existed way back then. Paleo did. Again, paleo consisted of uh, meats, fruits, and vegetables. You know, um, or the, the the subtle subtext in there: staying away from processed foods. That's what the paleo diet was. But again, that's that's the diet that I was trying to stick to back when I back when I was when I was doing my weight loss campaign. Some odd year, a few years ago, I weighed about 210, and I wanted to I wanted to lose the weight. So after about a year year and a half, I got it down to 140. But and this and especially towards the end, this was my diet, paleo, and I was also doing intermittent fasting too. But um, and with these. And it, like I said uh, a few minutes ago, necessity is the mother of invention. I had started uh, inter- I started doing intermittent fasting as well. I had also started uh, weightlifting as well. So, and all this is before I cracked and went on my week-long junk food binge. I'm trying to cut it short here because uh, it's like yeah, I've I've been I've been saying the story for the past several casts. So I'm trying to I'm trying to give the uh, Raiders Digest version here. So, but, I, but like I said, paleo is one of my diets, and it's one that I do believe in. Um, for a brief period of time, though, to be fair, I was, I wasn't a, I wasn't a vegan, but I was going, I was a vegetarian for a super brief period of time. But uh, I couldn't make that work because I gotta have my meat. And I'm gonna check. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say the volume's okay on this. It feels a little bit loud on my earphones, though. Or headphones, I should say. Uh, 
Um, but anyway, um, but I'm gonna, I'm kind of wanting to move along a bit. I'm kind of wanting to move along a bit in here. Um, so uh, I looked up, uh, another thing I started up, uh, I think I read a little bit on netcode, like what, uh, I guess uh, fighting games, or basically online games live and die by it. But uh, I was looking into, I was looking into netcode as it pertains to fighting games. Again, there, it seems the big buzzword is rollback netcode. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a trendy phrase. You know, it's like, it's like the online gaming equivalent of part of this balanced breakfast. You know, you know, like, uh, like every cereal commercial, every cereal out there has to have the tagline, part of this complete breakfast. It seems like, uh, it seems like fighting games and, uh, I guess other online games too, but, but, uh, again, as it pertains to fighting games, it seems like all the new games, all, all the new fighting games that are coming out, it's, oh, and it's even got rollback netcode. You know, it seems like it has to have that tag word in there in order for, uh, in order for people to get into the fighting game. So, I kind of know a little bit about it. Um, there's basically, it's basically kind of a fight between delay-based netcode and rollback. Um, but uh, the difference between the two, it's going to be very, very, very hard for me to explain it on a pseudo, on my pseudo cast here. But, um, I'll just go ahead and say that uh, from what I've read about them both, rollback is the better netcode. Um, for mainly because with delay-based netcode, any, um, how, how do I put it? Like if, um, if there's like a discrepancy between, um, between the two, uh, between you and your, and your human opponent, if there's a discrepancy between the ping and the, you know, the internet quality, etc., uh, internet latency, if there's a discrepancy there, um, delay netcode will, whoever, whoever's lagging will delay yours. And until in letting your uh, opponent catch up until you're both exactly the same, so in that in that context, uh, delay based, the quote unquote correction is front loaded. Um, you get the fast the faster of the two gets slowed down, gets delayed, letting the other guy catch up, and then roll back. Um, the way that works is uh. Um, oh, how can I put it? Yeah, because this is... If, um... You're not, you're not delayed. I guess uh, all of your, all of your inputs, um, all the things that you do, are, I guess, are somehow saved. And then, uh, rolled back. But like I said, it, I have a hard time really explaining this. On a pseudo cast, but um, but uh, the conclusion that I gain, but uh, all of, with rollback, all of you guys are able to do, still able to do the things that you're doing, but um, uh, when things get too bad, yeah, when things get too bad, and then when things are get get too jammed up and log jammed or whatnot, everything gets rolled back. Um. Everything you know, when everything's corrected and all that, like it does, like an auto correct. While all this is going on, there's like an auto correct. Everything gets, I guess. Um, another way of looking at it is the train wreck is allowed to occur. Whereas a uh, delay based, delay based netcode, um, the train wreck is prevented from happening. Like if two trains are about to collide, like uh, one of them or one of them gets. Like, one of them gets stopped so the other one can get by or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, whereas, uh, rollback netcode, the train wreck is actually allowed to occur. <sighs> and then, um, after the, after the train wreck has occurred, then everything is, like, fixed and rolled back to the way it used to be. But, once again, it's very, very difficult for me to explain this on a, on a cast like this. But, um, the short answer is rollback is better. But, um, but kind of like what Bill Maher said, 
Um, you know what Mother Nature likes even more than anything else? Condoms. Um, my version of this, for as far as net call goes, um, yeah, rollback is great. But do you know what's even better? Um, server regions, or regions. You know, because, um, back when I, back when I played Fantasy Strike, it was touted as having great rollback netcode. But here I am playing people clear across the, on the other side of the fucking planet. Like, I'm playing people from China. I mean, you got, you know, the ping rating of like four or five hundred or whatever. I mean, I mean, you're, you're, you're still pretty much phoning in your inputs at that point. You know, so... You know, it's kind of, you know, it's freaking annoying. I mean, it was still freaking annoying as hell to play somebody, you know, that far away. So, so, I mean, gate, I mean, online games need to have regions. Kind of like the game I'm currently playing, Dragon Ball Fighters. You know, there's like a, there's US East, US West. You know, there's those two servers, you know. So, um, even for the, for the rare time that I actually do play somebody online, it's, it's delay-based netcode, so not as good, but even then, the most I have to deal with is like 10 frames, 10 frames of lag. So, it, 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 I'll, I'll gladly take that over, uh, over a rollback netcode, but no, no, uh, regional servers at all. So, I mean, you're, it's, so again, I mean, rollback is great, but, you know, it ain't gonna mean shit if I gotta if I'm playing somebody like over in the Ukraine or something or over in Poland. I mean, but yeah, it. But like I said, it, it, it was, it was. This is something, uh, This, this is something that uh, I was having second thoughts on uh, saying in my cast. Because it was going to be... I thought it was going to be pretty difficult to pull off, but I figured what they all might as well go for it. But I would probably say, if you guys want to know the difference between delay and rollback, you'll probably have to Google it. Because like I said, I have a tough time trying to explain it. You know, trying to explain it here. But just short answer, rollback's better, but... If you don't have any... Uh, if your game doesn't have regional servers, it don't mean shit. Oh, and, um, also, wait, how long has it been? Oh, wow, 22 minutes. Well, looks like this is going to be a long one. But, plus, also, I'm trying to avoid making the same mistake I made yesterday. I, uh, I did a pseudo cast with, like, no preparation at all. Man, I had, I was just starving for things to talk about. So, I think the cast only lasted, lasted about 10 minutes, and I just cut it off. So, I think, wanting to make sure that I didn't make the same mistake twice... I actually started writing some stuff down. I didn't write anything down on my notepad. And again, I I'm not writing I'm not writing full scripts or anything. I'm just jotting down some notes and then I just I'm just speaking off of them. Everything else is ad libbed. It's everything else is improvised. So uh, but also last also um last night after watching um uh, oh God I wish it I want, I'm a, another fan, another a fan I am of this YouTube channel. It's called, uh, The Evil Eye. I think that's the name. And, um, he does a series called Analyzing Evil. Like, he takes evil characters and he analyzes them. It, as obvious as that might sound. Uh, but he talks about their psychology, their, you know, what makes them tick, etc. Well, he had a special, or he had an episode about, uh, the Joker off the Dark Knight. You know, the, why so serious that guy i mean i remember watching this movie once like i here let me um real quick i should be able i think it's still on my youtube uh maybe not let me go on the wiki real quick i want to find out what year it came out Two thousand eight. okay so so it was a movie I watched like 13 years ago, but um, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I thought, thought the Joker was pretty good, but I didn't, I didn't think he was like a total maestro or anything, because, I mean, just like the roll, just like the rollback netcode, um, just like veganism, it, 
it was a character, the Joker, the Dark Knight Joker was a character that was often just taught around as, oh my god, the face of ultimate evil, oh, what a brilliantly designed, you know, what a brilliantly designed evil character, and that kind of thing, and again, and I guess, now that I think about it, he, I guess, uh, this, the Dark Knight Joker is to the evil, uh, the evil character world what the Adams family uh, is to the pinball world. I don't get it. You know, I mean, although to be fair though, I've got a better opinion of the Dark Knight Joker than I do the Adams Family pinball. I mean, but again, the the appeal or the reverence to the Joker is lost on me. I don't get it. Um, one thing after after um, uh, I got through about three quarters of this of the movie. Like I, I, I probably forgot to mention it a few moments ago, but I did try to give this movie another watch. And again, I got as far as uh, I got as far when when Harvey Dent was just about to become Two Face. I got as far as that part, but and, you know, and again, I he, I mean, he didn't. I mean, again, I gave this movie a second go, and I didn't really. I, I, it still it still goes over my head. One thing I do have to say though, I mean it's okay. It's, it's and after thinking about it a moment just before I did this started up this cast, he kind of strikes me as the Bob Ross of evil. And, you know, and those that, you know, those that know me know my opinion of Bob Ross. What he paints, just doesn't interest me. Boring landscapes. It just. It's who Bob Ross is, and how he does it, is why I like him. The Dark Knight Joker is, although not as much as Bob Ross, but he's kind of the same, he kind of parallels Bob Ross. The evil that he pulls off, don't scare me none, I mean, you know, not, you know, not enough terror to make me, oh my god, how oh, heinous, oh my god, nothing like that at all. But it just, it's a different kind of Joker. You know, it's nothing like uh, like the original Clown Prince of Crime. He's acting all funny and happy and let's watch the let's watch this building blow up <laughs> You know, that kind of thing where he's all kinda of over the top, kinda of campy. Um the uh, the Joker on the um the Michael Keaton Batman, kinda of the same thing. Um the Joker has done on um uh, on Arkham Asylum and on the uh, Batman the Animated Series, kind of the same thing. It, you know, those, you know, the presentation didn't really didn't do anything for me. But I, again, the the Dark Knight Joker, however, that the presentation, the character is, you know, how he is and stuff. That's probably what impressed me on that. I don't, I mean, you know, this kind of Joker actually. I mean, the way it's done, that is what I like. It's it's the who he is and how he does it is why I like it. Again, I see a parallel between him and Bob Ross. Because again, the 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 crimes and the evil stuff that the Dark Knight Joker is pulling off, it you know it's just to me standard fare. You no, know? no, he's just trying to sow the key, seeds of chaos in a lawful world. You know, I, but again, it's just. It's, it's, it's who he is, it's his character makeup, and, you know, it's his style, is what impressed me the most about it. Same with Bob Ross. So. But, uh, but I guess, um, hang on one moment. But I guess in case of, um, if anybody's curious as to, uh, what I would consider my my um, all-time favorite bad guy, it would be Grand Admiral Thrawn. Um, he's a he's an Imperial um he's an Imperial general. Um, after the on um, the Return of the Jedi, after the Emperor was killed by Darth Vader, the Empire was in a shambles. Um, Grand Admiral Thrawn, he uh, basically rose and took over. Picked up where uh, the um, where uh, the emperor left off. His uh, his quest to crush the rebellion. 
But I mean, the the way he did it, um, he act and I'm starting to see if and yet another parallel. Um, he kind of parallels that of the Godfather, you know, the organized crime lord. Again, but with with these two guys though, and I mean, I actually read I actually read an interview with um Robert Duvall. He played uh Tom Tom Hagen, the lawyer. In the Godfather, he said the same thing. After you read the book or watched the movie, you look for an application to join. Grand Admiral Thrawn, the same way. I mean, yeah, he's, he's. I mean, he, te now technically. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, pause, pause, pause. Damn, I kind of went over long. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and just start that over. Oh wow. Yeah, I've got over 30 minutes. This is a long one. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm on a roll right now, so I'd like to finish. But anyway, I mean, technically, the Godfather, the shit he does, is evil. You know what I mean? Organized crime. But again, the way he does he does it in such a... In such a Machiavellian way... That, like, even the... I mean, even the, even the good guys... You know, even the good guys like myself would want to work for him. That's how skillful he was with his evil. Grand Admiral Thrawn, the same way. He's like the Star Wars equivalent of the Godfather. He wasn't in... I mean, technically he's evil. Like the Emperor. But, um, he, he was like... He wasn't, um... He wasn't cruel or anything like that. Um... But he basically... But again, it, it's really tough to explain... Without um, I, this is one of those that I don't really want to give spoilers for, but to me he's like the Star Wars equivalent of the Godfather. I mean, after you've read um, oh, you know, I forgot the name of the book, but I don't think he's um, I don't think Thrawn is in any of the movies, to my knowledge. But again, um, as depicted in the books, he's one of those that he might be, you know, might be with the Empire. You know, he might be trying to—he might be trying to crush, crush the rebellion. He might be trying to subjugate the galaxy. But the way he did it, even the good—I mean, even the good guys would want to join him. I mean, that's—that's that's pretty damn impressive. I mean, the Joel, i mean, the Dark Knight Joker kind of worked along the same lines. But he's—I mean, if even—but uh, if you were a good aligned person, you want nothing to do with this guy. I mean, he—I mean, the Joker. He bas he's basically an evil manipulator. It, I mean, Grand Admiral Thrawn manipulates people, but he, he was way better at it than the Joker. Like I said, with Thrawn, even the, even the good holy people wanted to join this guy's cause, or at the very least, had great respect for him. Nobody had respect for, nobody good, you know, nobody good and pure and all that had any respect for the Joker. They wanted nothing to do with him, so. But yeah, Grand Admiral Thrawn is my all-time favorite villain. Um, but again, I don't want to spoil too much on him. I'll just um, I'll if any of you guys are interested, um, just feel free to look him up. Oh, and um, let me rewind a little bit. And it's a good thing I wrote this down because I'm getting really tired of forgetting about this. Um, hold on one moment. Okay, but, um, but, um, to whom it may concern, I'm sorry if I'm, um, I'm sorry if I'm annoying the living hell out of you people talking about fighting games so much. But yeah, it, I kind of, I began to notice this, um, recently. It's, it's like, I sure I'm talking about fighting games a lot. You know, I'm wondering, like, any of the, any of the listeners are getting, you know, getting sick and tired of, oh god, is he talking about fighting games again? Man, I can't stand fighting games, man. Joel, will you please shut up about it? But here, my reasoning on this is, um, I haven't, I haven't consistently played a fighting game in 30 years, so I'm just now getting into it. Now, they're still, they're still not my all-time favorite video game genre. That's still reserved as a two-way tie for first between RPGs and MMOs. But these days, I'm so I'm burnt to a crisp on playing Guild Wars 2. You know, 
I'm I'm burned out on playing Final Fantasy XIV for four years. You know, I'm burned out on playing RuneScape for six years. And uh, I tried to play old school RuneScape um, probably about a year, year and a half ago, but I ended up crying uncle after six months. Trying to recapture the magic after playing it for, for six years straight back in the mid-2000s. You know, I'm... I'm burned out on, on playing World of Warcraft for four and a half years. The community, to me, got too toxic, or perhaps more importantly, they got they got too jaded for my taste. You know, I guess jadedness kind of breeds in toxicity, or it's a it's a component of it. Just I mean, it's like a. I mean, it's like a fifth. It was like a. It's like a fifteen plus year old game. So yeah. People have been playing it for that long, so yeah, they're going to be a little jaded and a little cynical. So, having to deal with all that, I quit playing WoW. You know, but but again, I'm basically, I'm burnt to a crisp on MMORPGs. And, to a lesser extent, pinball. But, uh, I put, unlike MMORPGs, I still play pinball to this day. I mean, technically, pinball is not a video game. Unless you count Pinball FX3 and Pinball Arcade. It's probably the closest I'll ever get to playing the role thing. So yes, I am going to have to subsist on these. But again, I haven't played, I haven't consistently played fighting games in 30 years. So I may, I mean, you know, I got back into them now. I've got some catching up to do. But once again, sorry to sound like a broken record. Um, Technically, they're still, they're not a favorite genre of mine. But as one who's basically starved for him for over 30 years, it's a genre I haven't explored in 30 years. I figure, you know, it's high time now. And um, and because I'm, I'm a little over long on this cast, and it kind of closes us out a bit. Uh, for those that are curious as to what got me into, as to what got me into, into fighting games, no, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't DFGC at all. It was um. Uh, to distill it all into one word, Broly Legs. So yeah, you know, that's, he's a fight, uh, again, I don't want to give too many spoilers on that. I'm not anti-spoiler, just to clear the air on that, but sometimes a spoiler can actually inspire somebody into getting into it. Like if you reveal the ending of a plot, or reveal the ending of a movie, that might actually inspire somebody to be like, that's in there? Oh well, I gotta check that movie out. But this is, this is one of those where I would rather, you, I'd rather preserve the joy of discovery for you guys. To I, I'd rather have you guys discover this on your own. Like, um, look him up, uh, Broly Legs. He's actually a tournament pro. But this was the guy after discovering this. This was pretty much the inspiration for me getting into fighting games. So I figured after seeing this. No excuses not to at least try. So, but as I've gone pretty over long on this, I normally try to keep these casts around 15 minutes or so, but I was on a roll, and I was trying to avoid making the same mistake twice. So I just kept on going. So, But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here, and I've got a lot of uploading to do. So, But otherwise... Thanks for all tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And hopefully I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. That won't go so over long. But, but until then, though, everybody, once again, take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye now.